हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ग्लोबल ऑनलाइन यूनिवर्सिटी सो आज के हमारे इस सेशन uh, का मेन मोटिव ये है टू हेल्प यू गेट टू नो आईसीटी सो दिस वीडियो इज हेल्पफुल फॉर दोज दोज हु हैव जस्ट स्टार्टेड विद योर प्रेपरेशन फ्रॉम आईसीटी यूनिट दिस यूनिट इज very important it contains five marks five questions which are of 10 marks okay so the speciality of today's session is that we will be looking at net 2020 paper at the last of this session okay so do watch this session complete and at the end we will look at net the fourth 24th september paper that happened last year we will look at it and we will together solve uh, ICT questions okay so this is the main aim for today's session first we will be looking at theory and then we will look at questions from 24th September 2020 okay so this is the syllabus so students who have not studied ICT we will um, help you know what is the theory and then I will also be telling you what are the kind of questions that can come in the examinations. Okay, what questions that have already come and what questions can come in the examination, we will be discussing in this whole session. So without wasting any time, let's start. So yesterday we studied about what is a computer. We studied all the various types of computer um, classification on the basis of size. We saw. super computers main frame micro computers mini computers then we looked at on the basis of technology we studied analog and digital then we also studied what are the types of computers on the basis of generation first second third fourth and fifth okay remember first generation uses um vacuum tubes then transistors then integrated circuit that ways okay so all this we studied yesterday we also studied what is a computer a computer is an electronic device that takes in input and gives you some result this is what we studied yesterday now we are going to study what are the main components of a computer what is there inside a computer so there are four basic components of a computer which is input device output device processing device and storage device okay so the basic components comprises of input output processing and storage devices so input devices are those devices which are present to take input okay the devices that are used to provide data to the computer okay so this is the computer when you want to give something to the computer you use input devices okay for example you want to type something on your computer what you are using you are using keyboard okay some you want the computer to open some particular file so you click through your mouse what is that you are giving input to the computers so mouse is an electronic device touch screen is an electronic device you have graphic tablets microphone what is microphone when you are giving voice voice is also a kind of data so microphone is also a kind of input device and scanner scanner is like uh, whenever you there is a photo or any document you want to make a digital copy of it you use a scanner for example you have your pan card you go to the a local shop um internet cafe or something and you say uh, if there is a scanner you say scan this document so what is this this pan card you are making a digital copy of this pan card so that is scanner so from exam point of view what you can expect there could be a question which among the following is not an input device okay that ways so if options are keyboard mouse touch screen and monitor for instance okay i'm just giving an example monitor so your right answer will be monitor because the question says which is not an input device so input devices are those that are used to provide data to the computer okay the reverse is output devices okay 
So some examples are keyboard, mouse, touch screen, graphic tablet, microphone, scanner. The opposite is output device is very simple. When the computer wants to give the result, when computer wants to display the result, it uses output devices. Okay. The response, it could be any image. It could be some visual response or through sound or through any kind of devices. Then you are using output devices. For example, you want to watch a movie. So you click on the mp4 file or the video file. So output will be shown in the monitor. Printer. Printer is used to print any document from the computer in a hard paper. Printer is output device. Projector. So sometimes whatever is being played in the computer, if you want to see it on a very big screen, you use a projector. Okay. There is also output device called a plotter. There is speaker. Speaker is used to hear sound. So output from the computer, whatever is the result, when you want to see the result, you see it through the output devices. It is the opposite of input devices. Now you have CPU. CPU is the brain of the computer. This is the most important point. You should know what is the brain of the computer. CPU, it performs all types of data processing operations. Whatever operations you want the computer to perform, the CPU will do. Okay. For instance, um, in a human body, you want to make some calculations. Okay. Um, 500 into 20. So, this calculation, if you want to do, you do it in your brain. So, that the same way, anything that the computer has to do, whatever operations the computer wants to perform it performs through the you you by using cpu cpu is the central processing unit the name only suggests it is the central part okay so there are three components of cpu the cpu also has three components computer has four basic components input output device okay cpu and storage unit so this CPU also consists of three parts, arithmetic, logic unit, memory unit and control unit. So, arithmetic, logic unit. What is arithmetic? Arithmetic is like your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. All the arithmetic operations are done by the arithmetic logic unit, ALU. Then you have control unit. So, control unit, you remember in school we had this monitor. Whenever we used to go from the ground to our classes, there, uh, there would be a school captain or something. What he does, it he or she, the main task was to see if the students are going in order. The way the student's line should go, it is going in order. The same way that this task is done by control unit. So, control unit, it is like the supervisor who sees that all the operations are in order and, or not. Memory unit. So, memory unit as the name suggests, it holds the instructions. Whatever the instruction is there, that instructions are stored by memory unit. Okay, for example, um, some uh, calculation you wanted the computer to do. So, that 20 plus 20. So, it does not display the result directly. It stores it somewhere. The result 40 stored somewhere. That place is called memory unit. Okay. So, it could be intermediate result. It could be final results. All these results are stored by the control unit. Okay. So, there is also a term set of registers. This is very important in exams. Many times this has come. Again, I am telling you. In today's session, we will be looking at the 24th September 2020 paper. We are going to solve it together. Okay. So attend this session and then we move on to the questions. Within CPU, there are a high number, a number of high speed special purpose memory units. So if, if by chance a question comes, um, arrange the following with respect to speed, registers, cache, RAM, secondary memory. 
at that point you have to remember that registers are the fastest okay these are the fastest among registers cache memory main memory or secondary memory okay and it is faster than ram also registers are like uh, the these these have very small information they can store very little information but these are very fast okay faster than cache and ram motherboard so motherboard is like um, when if, if by chance you get get to see what is inside a computer there is a main circuit which is called motherboard all the different slots like ram rom all that chips are in embedded inside the memory uh, motherboard okay sometimes you might have seen some people say okay my computer is very slow it has only 2 gb ram okay so what some who is an it or computer expert he will say okay why don't you increase your ram so i make it 16 gb your computer this ram slot first is it was 2 but then from 2 it you increased it to 16 this extra ram is put into the motherboard okay so computer's main circuit board which contains the cpu the memory and expansion slot for additional circuit boards so this additional like i told you you want to add more ram you put it into into the motherboard so you should know this term as well buses so buses are like wires for connecting the computer to other devices you might have heard of this term usb you say usb port usb stands for universal serial bus okay so buses are wires again registers these are special memory these have a very high speed motherboard is the main circuit boards um, there there is cpu the memory all the extra ram rom all, all that is there in the motherboard buses are nothing just wires for connecting the computers you might have heard of usb usb is universal serial bus then you have storage unit so storage all the data and um, instructions are stored in storage unit so these are of two types primary memory and secondary memory okay here i would like to tell you yeah from exam uh, there could be a question like um, where would you add additional ram into a computer at that time the answer will be motherboard okay or also once i saw a question where it says which is the main circuit board motherboard fatherboard daughter board so at that time also the answer will be motherboard next is like we were discussing storage unit so storage units are primary and secondary memory so this is very important their favorite nta will ask every time there you can expect one question from ram ram is very important you should know ram is a part of primary memory and which will be looking at today so storage unit the memory in the computer is divided into two parts or two kinds which is primary and secondary primary memory is it is also called the main memory okay you can directly read or write into this primary memory and it is on the fixed into the motherboard like we said we saw here okay you saw here motherboard here the cpu memory and expansion slots are in motherboard that is what the statement is saying so primary memory is fixed on your motherboard of your computer it is the main circuit so primary memory is fast but it is not fast as registers and cache so with respect to speed if you see the fastest is registers then you have cache and then you have primary memory right also primary memory are of three types let's see each one of these main memory so main memory is like the largest it is divided into two types ram and rom so in ram you can read and write ram is a kind of volatile memory you should know this term ram is a volatile memory because 
whatever is there in the RAM, suddenly, like if you have opened a file in Notepad, okay, many times it happens. When we were using CPU, these days uh, we use laptops, so laptops have battery, but CPU, when they were connected to the electricity directly, if the power used to go off, whatever would be there in the Notepad, it will get erased. So RAM. In RAM, you can read and write, but if electricity goes off, whatever is there in the RAM, it will go off. RAM is of two types, static and dynamic RAM. So you just know this name. There is no need because I, I haven't seen any question from types of RAM, but you should just know the name. Again, let me tell you, main memory is further divided into RAM and row. RAM is a read write memory. You can read also, you can read means you can read whatever uh, data is there, but you cannot make, you can also make changes. Write means you can make changes as well. Read means whatever is there, you can just fetch and read it but write means you can make changes it is a kind of volatile memory okay there are two types of RAM: static and dynamic then you have rom rom is stands for read only memory so whenever you want to read something in rom you cannot write to it you can just read it so to use rom whatever data is there in ROM, you have to transfer it to RAM and only then you can read it. ROM, I would also like to tell you that um, when you start the computer, all that instructions that you need for starting the computer is stored in ROM. And this is done by the manufacturer who has made the computer. They write into ROM so that we don't make any changes to it. ROM is slower than RAM. ROM is also of three types, PROM, EEPROM and EEPROM. So PROM stands from programmable read-only memory. It means it is a kind of a chip which is manufactured empty. So they are made empty and then they are programmed later. Okay, so one type of ROM is PROM you can say of PROM which is programmable read-only memory, it is manufactured empty, okay? Like you buy a book, whenever you buy a notebook, so a notebook, you buy it empty and then what do you do it? You write in it, the same as P-ROM. There is a different kind of ROM which is called EP-ROM. So EP-ROM is erasable programmable read-only memory. Okay, so this means that EEPROM can be erased and it could be reprogrammed. Another type of ROM is EEPROM which is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. So in this you can make changes by so in this sense it is read only but you can erase it and then you can program it again next type is storage units so computer has storage units the smallest is bit then comes byte then kb then mb gb okay then you have tb terabyte and petabyte so from exam point of view you should know till here okay this is important petabyte is not important one byte is equals to eight bits okay and one nibble is equals to four bits so this is something very important for exam point of view you should know all these terms very well. 1 KB is 1024 bytes. 1 MB is 1024 kilobytes. So these are the different terms. 
first comes bit then comes nibble then comes your kb mb gb and tb here these terms are important as well okay these terms one kb is called 1000 bytes one mb is equals to 1 million bytes, 1 GB is equals to 1 billion bytes and 1 TB is equals to 1 trillion bytes. Right? So in exam, uh, I had seen a question where they said 1 million, 1 billion bytes is, so there the answer was GB. Okay, so you see what are the kind of questions that are coming. I hope you guys are getting what we are studying over here these terms you should know 1000 bytes is kb 1 million bytes is mb see m for million m for mb you can remember this way then 1 gb is 1 billion bytes and 1 tb is equals to 1 trillion bytes see t for trillion t for terabyte right let, now let's see what is a computer software. So computer software is a program that helps us to do some particular work. Okay. Mm, for example, whenever you open a file or whenever you, you edit something, you might have uh, seen photo editor. So what is photo editor? It is a kind of software. Software is anything that helps you to do any particular task. Okay. So for writing text, for instance, you use notepad. For looking into the internet, you use browsers. So all these are particular software. So softwares are nothing. These are special kind of programs that helps you do specific work okay so without a software you cannot do anything softwares are of two times system software and application software system software are those that help you manage the computer resources okay in as a computer as a whole when you want to manage this you call uh, you many people say they call computers as system so system software is something that helps you to support and manage computer resources. What are computer resources? Anything that is attached to the computer. Your monitor, your mouse, your keyboard, your printer, your plotter. All these things are called computer resources. And to manage them, you use system software. Okay. So system software, it is the bridge between computer hardware and application software. These are of four types. First is operating system. Everybody knows operating system. But again, I am telling you, we call it OS. Everybody knows this OS. So OS is um, a software which helps computer hardware and software to talk to each other. Okay. This communication part is done by operating system. So there are certain type of operating system which is important. You should know the name. These examples are very, very important. I am going to put three stars in front of it. Okay. By the number of stars, many students are, ask me what to study in ICG. So these are the particular topics that you need to pay attention to. What is OS? OS is a software that helps hardware and software to talk to each other. Examples are Windows. Windows we know it is one of the most famous operating system in the world. Windows 10, Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, XP and you might have also heard about Apple's. Apple's Macintosh. Mac is for Macintosh OS. Then you have the more famous, famous ones I'm going to tell you. Linux and also there is one Unix. So these are the type of these are the famous operating system. Here I would like to tell you in one of the examinations. In I think Karnataka set examination. I saw a question where it was 
where it said which is not an operating system. So the options were Unix, Linux, and uh, uh, I think Windows was one. Windows and Vnix. So they said which is not OS. So that time Unix is an operating system, Linux is operating system, Windows is operating system, but Vnix is not an operating system. So at that time Vnix was the right answer. Okay. Then you have utility software as the name suggests. Utility software is used to maintain the computer system. Okay, so they have like special purpose. For example, your virus. Okay, there are um, antiviruses, file managers, and this is the disk defragmentation or disk fragmenter. So, when you want to divide the space of the disk, you use disk fragmenter, screen savers. So these are particular software that help you to manage or maintain the computer. Okay, like this defragmenter, network managers, application launchers, antivirus, backup software. So backup is something when you have large amount of data in your computer and sometimes because of some problem, this data goes away. So backup softwares are used to make a copy of the software. So, so that if something goes wrong with this, you can get data from the backup. So, there are special backup softwares as well. Now, we have device driver software as the name suggests. For using particular devices, you need to have their driver. For example, internet driver. Okay, so it is a software that controls the devices attached to the computer system. Okay, when you attach a device to a computer, you might have seen computer searching for suitable device driver. So whenever we attach something, for example, a writing pad, you attach it to the computer, digital writing pad, at that time it looks for that particular driver. So to, to help the devices run in the computer, you need particular device drivers. Okay. These device drivers tell o OS how to interact with these devices. Okay, like scanners, printers, modems, all these use their particular drivers. Then you have processor software. So this is very, very important. Again, I'm going to put three stars in front of it. Do remember these. You know, computer understands only digital, only machine language, right? Now, till now, from my lecture, previous lecture also, I have told this, computer understands only zeros and ones. For instance, here English is written, right? A computer is a digital machine. This is what is written over here. But computer does not understand this language. If I want to open a file, there is nowhere written in the computer like open the file. That is not written. Computer, there's, there will be some special code for Open the file in the form of zeros and ones. Computer understands only the language of zeros and ones, which is called binary language. So, which is the language that computer understands? If someone will ask, what will you say? You will say computer understands only binary language. See, by, by means, you remember, by means two. So, here two digits are there, zero and one. Only two digits are there. That is why it is called binary language. Okay, so now if you want to give instructions to the computer, because computer understands only zeros and ones, you will have to give instructions in zeros and ones, but that is going to be very difficult. If you write everything in zeros and ones, it is going to be very difficult. So what computer programmers or mm, these computers engineers they did, they made a language. They made an artificial language which is called programming language. So programming language is something which is slightly related to English. But so that we can write it or software engineers, software engineers, they can write in high level languages which is called programming languages. Okay, so now you got it. Computer understands only 
binary language which is the language of zeros and ones writing in zeros and ones is very difficult so what they did is they made a artificial language which is called programming language now what now what do you have understood this is human being okay software engineer this is a computer so this person does not understand this person understands zeros and ones computer understands zeros and ones they this person they understand english so they made high level language now to convert high level language into zeros and ones you need processor software okay so whatever code or whatever computer program is written it is called source code so source code is the code that software engineers write that source code is converted into object code object code is the code that only computer will understand the language of zeros and ones so to do this conversion you have three language processors assembler interpreter and compiler this is again very important what is assembler it converts assembly language into machine language you remember uh, when yesterday we were studying the, the generations of computer the first generation computer understood only machine language the second com generation computer understood assembly language so assembly language was a little better than zeros and ones but still it was not very simple as high level language okay so the most difficult was machine language then the better version was assembly language <coughs> and now that the software engineers are using which is high level language so to convert from machine language to assembly language or i would say from assembly language to machine machine language you we use assembler right as the name suggests from assembly language to machine language you use assembler then you have compiler so compiler which translates high level programming codes is into machine code okay one basic feature of compiler is it translates whole block of high level code at once this question has come in net exams many times about compiler there is a difference between a compiler and a interpreter so if i tell you here interpreter is a software that converts program instructions into high level language written in high level language line by line so for instance this is 10 lines of code okay in high level language again there is another program of 10 lines in high level language so when compiler will have to translate compiler when compiler does this source code into machine code he will do the whole block at once but if interpreter is doing it will do one line then other line then other line then other line it will go line by line so this is the difference between the two compiler translates the whole code at once but interpreter it goes line by line so this whole thing that you see over here this will tell you a compiler translates whole block of high le high level code at once converts it into machine code so there are particular programming languages like java c c++ php python so all they use compiler okay interpreter so there are various pro other languages which use interpreter so the only difference is compiler does the translation at once but interpreter it goes line by line okay so this is it that we have studied today uh, now what as promised i told you that we will be looking at 
question from one paper so here i will show you okay this i have taken from nta website i i will show you over here this is the the examination okay this is the paper uh, okay so this was the exam that was conducted on 24th september shift 1 right last year this is the latest paper i am showing you over here adult education in the adult education examination the paper one part i am showing you i have got this paper from the nta website okay now let me show you question number 36 so question number 36 is related to your ict from this unit i have seen what is the full form of cd rom cd rom is compact disk read only memory so this is cd rom i hope you guys got it okay so you see you we studied today about rom so rom is read only memory the same way cd stands for compact disk read only memory another question from last year examination that we see the next question that was asked is multimedia comprises of okay you remember multimedia phones that had come few years ago 10 15 years ago that time what are what is the meaning of multimedia multimedia is when you are using text and audio audio and video video only text audio and video so when you are using all these things text audio and video you are using multimedia so here the right answer is option four okay i hope you guys understood now let's see another question what is my motive for you my motive is to show you what are the kind of questions that are coming over here whether we have studied it or not now you are going to tell by solving this ict information and communication technology comprises of so yesterday only we studied about what is ict you have to tell here ict comprises of online learning learning through mobile application web based learning or all of the above so here in this question the right answer is here the options are a and b only a and c only d only or a only so here the right answer is 3 d only because all these things comprises of ict when, whether you are learning online or through mobiles remember yesterday i told you whenever you are lear learning through radio television electronic gadgets that is ict or through the use of internet so web based and online learning is kind of same thing so here the answer will be c d only let's see another question okay e-commerce companies require personal data to serve the stakeholders better in this process privacy may get compromised so this is a assertion reason question we haven't reached till e-commerce but again let's do it here you have to say both a and r are correct r is not the r is the correct explanation of a or whether a and r are correct r is not the correct explanation so there are e-commerce what is e-commerce when e you are doing business electronically so that time they ask you about personal data so yes to serve better companies they ask you about personal data this is true but in this pro process primary privacy may get compromised so both a and r are correct and r is the correct explanation of a okay so here right answer is option a mm, again python is a programming language operating system search engine or snake so python python is a kind of programming language 
here the right answer is option a in the today's session also i told you i'll, I'll show you over here where we studied yeah here i told you programming languages like java c c plus plus php python all these are various kind of programming language so these are the five questions that had come in the 24th september first shift 2020 examination i hope you guys got how to solve this question what are the questions that are coming and my motive for you is every day after the session i am going to take one last year's paper and we will be solving it together okay so today we talked about what are the components of computer input output devices processing device storage devices we looked at the various input devices then we also looked at output devices like monitor printer projector plotter speaker we also talked about cpu the brain of the computer so cpu also comprises of three components alu memory unit control unit alu is used for doing logical or op arithmetic operations like addition subtraction multiplication division control unit it is like um, a supervisor who checks what is the order that is being followed memory unit it stores the result okay uh, intermediate result or final results whatever the instructions that is stored in memory unit we also talked about registers so registers are a kind of memory units which are very fast they are the fastest there is also motherboard motherboard is the main circuit board in your computer where there is cpu there is memory if you want to add your ram and rom is also present on the motherboard we also talked about buses buses are wires which are attached to the computer okay so data can be transmitted to the computer and from the computer to other devices also we also talked about storage unit so to store data we use primary memory and secondary memory primary memory is of two three types main memory cache memory and registers so main memory comprises of actually ram and rom ram is the volatile memory it is further divided into static and dynamic rom is a non volatile memory okay it is non volatile it is further divided into three types p rom ep rom and ee prom we also talked about the storage units uh, the smallest is bit then nibble then byte kb mb gb tb so 1 kilobyte is called 1000 bytes 1 mb is equals to 1 million i told you from megabyte you have to remember 1 million from 1 gb you have to remember 1 gb is equals to 1 billion and 1 tb is equals to 1 trillion so you see the same name has also derived from t stands for trillion and t stands for terabyte which is tb we also talked about computer software so software are programs that help you to do a particular task there are two types system software and application software system software are further divided into os os is used uh, to do communication between hardware and software i also told you about the various types of os there is also utility software which is help which helps you to maintain the computer system we also have device drivers which are used uh, to which are used by computers to communicate with printer scanner modems etc we also talked about processor software where i told you that computers understands only machine language which is the language uh, binary language of zeros and ones so when you want to tell something to to the computer if it is very difficult to write it into binary language so we have made a artificial language which is called high level language now these languages are usually high level languages are in english so to convert it into the machine code there you need processor software we have three type of processor software assembler 
So assembler converts assembly language into machine language. Compiler converts your high level language into object code. So the programming languages, the famous ones are like C, C++, PHP, Java, Python. Okay. And the difference between compiler and interpreter also we saw. Compiler translates the whole block of code at once into machine code. While interpreter goes line by line and then translates into machine code. Okay. Lastly, I would like to tell that um, there are students who are continuously very curious about the paper. Are very anxious which is going to start from 2nd of May. They feel how to prepare for paper one because paper one is a very important part in your selection in the examination. This examination leads a lots of practice, a lot and lot of practice. So students ask how to pro practice. I would like to tell you practice through mock test. The more number of mock tests you do, the more you are able to solve questions in the examination. So for that purpose, Global Online University has got for you 40 mock tests. We will provide you the link to the WhatsApp on our, to the test on our WhatsApp group. So this new batch we have started from 26 on our WhatsApp group. Okay, so in the WhatsApp group, um, if you have any doubts and queries, it is very difficult for us to answer each and every doubt on our channel. So through WhatsApp, what you can do is whenever you have any query, you directly put it on our group. Whosoever sees the question, they will respond to your query. Also, you can find people of the same paper too as well. We also provide you solution PDF. Whenever you are giving test, I personally would like to suggest you, you just see the score. You can analyze your score through this mock test where you are making mistakes if you are making mistake repeatedly in one particular topic like higher education system so you are making every day you are having less marks in higher education system practice this test more these tests you can do multiple times also we provide you with ebook because students always complain that madam book is very big or um, is very vast so in our ebook we provide you short notes for paper one on each unit these course is present in hindi and english you also have video course and additional 1000 mcqs so we also provide you with previous years papers as well so if you are interested you can contact us on our whatsapp group you can join our WhatsApp group. The fees is just 999. Alternatively, these tests are also available on Global Online University app. Where the 3 months fees is 999 and for 6 months it's 1499. So, we will be... That's it for me. We will be meeting tomorrow with part 3 of ICT. Many things are left in this part of um, ICT. So we will be looking at this again and then we will be moving on to the basics of internet and digital initiatives. Okay. So we will meet tomorrow at the same time. My class is every day at 9 p.m. Do come. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can never update, miss an update from Global Online University. So we will meet tomorrow. Bye.